Having a slow website is just unacceptable in today's day and age. Asking visitors to give you four or five seconds of their time to load the content on your pages is something you can't really afford doing because almost no one is gonna be willing to do that for you anymore. With that said, I'm gonna walk you through how to effectively set up a caching service on your WordPress website to make your website faster. Let's dive in. Before we get started, this video is aimed especially for people powering their websites with Thrive Suite. I'm gonna show you how to effectively use WP Rocket to set up a client-side caching service. The method that I'm gonna walk you through is the way in which I have WP Rocket configured in all of my personal projects. I've been doing this for many years now and it allows me to get an extra boost in website speed that I think you're going to like. Now, do keep in mind that caching is just one aspect of website speed, but there are many other factors that could contribute to slow loading times. Image sizes probably being one of the most popular reasons. Here's a video where I go a little bit more in depth into this topic. Okay, before we get into the mechanics of setting up WP Rocket, let's just talk about caching real quick. What is it and why should you care about it? The term caching refers to the concept of storing a copy of your website somewhere. And we'll talk about the places where this copy can be stored in a second, but it's the concept of storing a copy of your website's most useful and unchanged information somewhere where users can easily access it without having to load the entire content of your page on every visit. And of course, by not having to load, say your logo, your images, your fonts, your theme style sheet and so forth and so on, users get to bypass this step and enjoy a much faster and user-friendly experience on their second and third and fourth visits. There are a few different types of caching methods, but I'd say that the two most popular ones are server-side caching and client-side caching. Server-side caching is something that would be handled by your hosting provider if you're building your website on WordPress. And as the name implies, it essentially consists of optimizing the performance of your website at the server level. Remember the copy of your website that I was talking about a minute ago? Well, with server-side caching, your server is responsible for making that copy of your site's content and serving it to users without needing to regenerate each page from scratch on every visit. And then we also have client-side caching, which is the one that we're gonna be focusing on on this video. With client-side caching, we are allowing users to keep a copy of our website's info on their web browsers. And by having these copies get stored locally on their browsers, they don't have to regenerate all of our pages from scratch either. Now, Tony, other than how they store copies of our pages, how are these two types of caching services any different? Because it sounds like both server-side caching and client-side caching do the same thing, right? Well, client-side caching that is powered by a plugin like WP Rocket is great for static content. And static content is content that is the same for all users and doesn't change very often. For example, your logo on your website is static. You know, every, every user sees the same logo. Your theme CSS style sheet is the same for everyone. And so are the fonts that you're using on your website. Server-side caching, on the other hand, is better known for handling dynamic data. And dynamic data is the content of your website where things need to be pulled from the database. For example, the content of your blog post gets pulled from your database. If you have a WooCommerce store, your products get pulled in from the database. You know, the comments that people submit to your blog posts get stored in your database and those get pulled in dynamically as well. Now, important, you most certainly don't have to pick one type of caching over the other one. You know, you can have server-side caching and client-side caching running simultaneously. In fact, I try to do this with all of my websites. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through setting up server-side caching in this video because that's up to your hosting provider to offer, but most hosting providers these days, I would say, you know, offer caching at the server level in one way or another. You may just wanna check that yours does as well. Now, let's jump into the intricacies of setting up WP Rocket on our WordPress websites. I'm using WP Rocket because it plays really well with Thrive Suite. No other reason other than that and that I've been using it for many years, but there's a ton of different caching plugins that you can use um, on WordPress. Great, so as I was saying, WP Rocket is a plugin that you can sign up for and install on your WordPress website. And you know, just having it installed automatically does a lot of caching configuration for you, but I do wanna show you some of the more advanced settings that you can enable. When you fire up WP Rocket, the two most important tabs that you wanna concentrate on are 
the file optimization tab and the media tab. But before we dive into those, make sure that under cache, you've enabled caching for mobile devices. Everything else I typically just leave as it is. And then under preload, make sure that you activate preloading to make sure that your cache is always preloaded after it purges every 10 hours. Now diving into file optimization, this is where the magic happens. A lot of what we're going to be doing here is what makes our site faster and what will allow us to get some really nice Google page speed scores as well. Now, here's what I suggest you do to begin with. Do not, I repeat, do not activate every option in here because your website will break. I understand that, you know, the first time you see all of these settings available to activate, our minds go crazy because we wanna optimize every little thing that is available for us. But this is going to create all sorts of incompatibilities between our theme, our plugins, and WP Rocket. In fact, actually, I dare you to try this out if you want. Try enabling all of these options in this tab just to see what it does to the front end of your site. And chances are it will break something. Now, don't worry, regardless of which option you enable, all of these settings are reversible, which is why you can afford to activate all of these settings if you want, because if something breaks in the front end of your site, you can always come back and you know deactivate them again and your site will go back to being as it usually was. Nothing is going to break permanently. You see, what we wanna try to do in this tab is try to deliver our website CSS and JavaScript files, which are the ones that typically take up a lot of resources in the most organized way, but we have to be smart about it, which is why ideally you want to minify CSS, optimize CSS delivery by removing unused CSS, and then if you scroll down a little bit, you wanna to try to load JavaScript deferred and delay JavaScript execution. You'll see though, for example, that WP Rocket allows us to not activate some options on a plugin by plugin basis, or we can even give it code if we wish to deactivate some of these functionalities for specific plugins. You see, here's the thing, WP Rocket just isn't perfect at combining CSS, optimizing it, delaying JavaScript, and so forth and so on all the time. Sometimes it's going to get things wrong, which is why if we want to preserve this functionality, but we start to notice that it comes into conflict with one of our plugins, we can turn it off for only that one plugin that's giving us trouble. But I have to say for the most part, I'm pretty happy with, with WP Rocket. I've been using it for, I, I don't know, seven years or so, and it's gotten smarter and smarter over time. And I find myself not having too many issues with it lately. Just by toggling these settings that I've shown you, your site will already feel much faster. And you should also get some decent looking Google PageSpeed scores as well, as long as there's nothing else weird, you know, happening with your website. Now, please understand that these are the settings that typically work for me and not always. This is because every site is built differently. You know, the plugins that you have installed on your website are different from the ones that I have installed on mine. And at the end of the day, again, WP Rocket is smart, but it's not always perfect at doing certain tasks that may break or, you know, that may come into conflict with one of our plugins. And so it's just good habit to simply enable these settings one by one. And you know, as soon as you enable one of these settings, check the front end of your website to see that there's nothing strange going on. And if by enabling one of these settings, you do notice that something breaks or you know, there's something fishy happening on the front end of your website, it's just as simple as going back and deactivating the setting that you just activated. Now, before we wrap up, I do want you to go inside the media tab of WP Rocket and enable lazy loading for images and videos. Although I have to say that if you're building your pages with Thrive Architect, this page builder already comes with the option to enable lazy loading on your images, but still doesn't hurt to have it on. Hopefully this video has given you a little bit of more insights as to what caching is and how you can properly configure client site level caching on all of your websites. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop them down below in the comment section. I'll happily address all of those and don't forget that if you still don't have access to Thrive Architect, which plays wonderfully well with WP Rocket, there's a link in the description box down below that you can click on to grab your license today. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate your time. I will see you soon. Thank you.